And I guess one more question would be, why doesn't God reveal himself to everyone? Why does he use man to spread the word? Yeah, good question, Drew. So God could supernaturally reveal himself to everyone just by snapping his fingers. But the way I like to think of it is the relationship of a father and a son, okay? So I can just do everything for my son. You know, if, if he needs something, I can get it for him. You, you know, I can, I can help him put his toys together. I can help him to build something. I can do all that for him and do it way better than him. Okay. However, there's a certain sense of joy and delight I get from watching him engage and interact with the world. I get something out of that. I love to equip, enable, and support my son to watch him learn and grow and develop the skill set that I already have. That is much like what God is doing with us. God delights in watching us learn, grow, develop the skill set that he already has inherently because he's perfect. And so he wants us to come alongside him and participate in his mission in his goal, like father, like son. He is our heavenly father. He wants us to be like him. And so it's God's gracious mercy that he comes down and allows us to participate in his mission. So that to God is more important than some of the sheer or raw numbers that we're often concerned about, right? Oh, God needs to just snap his fingers and save everyone. Oh, okay, but... He wants to use us. He wants to develop us. He wants to improve us. He wants us to turn into Christ-likeness so that our witness and testimony is the testimony of God, right? So, yeah, Drew, God could be much more efficient and get it done all on his own without using us. But then we wouldn't grow and develop in the way he wants us to so that we could be more like him and his son. This individual named Brandon says this, your God ignored all the genocides, ways, slavery, etc., etc. So far, don't hold your breath. So here's Brandon's idea. Why are you praying for Ukraine? Your God ignored in the past all of the other atrocities that were being done by the, you know, evil people in the world. So don't hold your breath. God's not going to do anything here either. Okay. So I, I would have two immediate answers for Brandon. My first answer would actually be somewhat associated with what we were just talking about with Drew's question, right? Somebody could very well ask, why doesn't God snap his fingers and eliminate Putin and all the evil forces and save Ukraine, right? But again, it's because God wants us to be like him. God wants his children to reflect his righteousness, his glory, his love, his compassion, etc., and so the way God works very often is not to just snap his fingers and do a thing. Instead, it's to leverage good human beings that are seeking to live for God's glory and to honor and glorify him. It's to lead them to do righteousness in the world. And so when Brandon says God ignored all these things in the past... Oh, contraire, I disagree completely, Brandon. God didn't ignore these things in the past. God instead used his people to bring about a transformation. It, it is no secret that Christians were largely responsible for the abolition of slavery in the West. Okay? And, and there are plenty of biographies and historical facts of Christians doing that. That, those are answers to prayer. God, please abolish this wicked slavery that's happening. And sure enough, he raises up Christians who sacrifice for that fact. Now, don't get me wrong. Down through history, Christians have been slow often to respond to issues of justice out in the world. Okay, But it's because we're children. We're infants. We're growing in this. Okay, Just as I was slow to learn to ride my bike without training wheels, so too I was slow to recognize injustice in the world and do something about it. But as I am conformed ever more to the image of God's Son, I am more quick, I'm more ready, I'm more able, I'm more capable. I recognize almost immediately what is just and what is in unjust. But it takes time. I have to grow. I have to learn. And God chooses to leverage us and use us because He wants us to come alongside 
and to do justice in the world. Okay, so that would be my first response to Brandon. Your God ignored all the genocides, ways, slaveries, etc. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He chose to use human beings. Okay, he chose to use human beings. That's very different. That's very different. And praise God that he chose to use us to help. Here's the second thing I would say, and it's, it's somewhat related. Brandon fails to recognize progressive revelation in humanity. Owen Barfield is the greatest unknown inkling, okay? And Owen Barfield had an idea called the evolution of consciousness. And here was Owen Barfield's idea. Mankind, as a totality, as a whole, is learning, growing, improving. We are, especially in our capacity to think about morality, righteousness, good, love, compassion, etc. You can see, for example, how the West itself and the values of human rights in the West have grown and developed out of Christianity, okay? And it's because consciousness has evolved over time. Owen Barfield is brilliant. I, I agree 100% CalMagic. He, um, C.S. Lewis said of Barfield, he is the greatest of my unofficial teachers. C.S. Lewis said that of Barfield. C.S. Lewis says, Owen Barfield towers over us all. That's what C.S. Lewis said. And no one knows Owen Barfield, but he's absolutely brilliant. And here, here's the point, okay? Why does this matter? Isn't this a weird idea? Think about it. Brandon wants the Bible to explicitly condemn slavery in its 21st century form. That's what Brandon wants. Brandon wants a timeless text that is handed down from the heavens on golden tablets or in a scroll. It's beamed down from heaven and it has the eternal truths of all time, not taking into account at all that human beings are part of this process and we develop over time. Instead, if you take a Barfieldian view of human beings and how their consciousness grows over time, Instead, God gave us the tools within Christianity and the Bible to abolish slavery when we were ready. Tom Holland wrote a book called Dominion. Tom Holland is not a Christian, okay? He wrote a book called Dominion, and if you read through that whole book, it's great, by the way. He, he writes in such a narrative form. It's really fun to read Tom Holland, and he's just going through history. Tom Holland's conclusion is that the, entirety, the entire edifice of the West— all of our morals, all of our virtues, all of our perspective is built on the foundation of Christianity. That's what Tom Holland says. And he's not even a Christian. Tom Holland, when he concluded the book, he says, I'm not a Christian, but by the same token, I also have to recognize that my entire being is suffused with Christianity because I grew up in the West. That's what Tom Holland says. Now, I want to apply that approach to what Brandon says. Notice all of the things that Brandon points out that are implied as bad. Genocide, slavery, all of these things Brandon says are bad. How does he know those things are bad? If he went to some cultures that weren't in the West, they wouldn't think genocide is bad. They wouldn't think slavery is bad. Notice that some countries in the East right now don't seem to think genocide and slavery is bad. They don't think war is bad. They're happy to engage in all of those things. Why does Brandon know that genocide, war, and slavery are bad? Because he grew up in the West. Brandon is more Christian than he knows. Brandon is more Christian than he thinks. Brandon is standing upon the edifice that Christianity built and saying, human rights, I assume human rights are good. I'm going to attack the very thing which gave rise to my opinion that human rights are good. Now, I'm not playing a fun game here. I'm not playing a trick, okay? Some presuppositionalists end up playing an epistemological trick here, right? You're standing on the very thing you're condemning. That's not what I'm trying to do here. Here's what I'm trying to do. Brandon doesn't recognize that he has actually been raised in a context of Christianity, and that's why he knows slavery, war, and genocide is wrong. He doesn't recognize that, but it's true. He's right about that, okay? And here's my point. Brandon thinks the Bible is deficient because 
it doesn't explicitly condemn slavery in the way, 21st century way he would prefer. But here's what God chose to do instead. God gave us his word. God gave us the Bible. God gave us the foundation out of which would flow the very culture and society that would recognize that genocide, war, and slavery are bad. You see what I mean? God gave us the tools to discover this on our own. He gave us the foundation out of which these values could grow and flourish. Why? Because he wants us to be part of his redemption. He wants us to be part of his dominion, okay? And if you can understand this in a Barfieldian way, you begin to recognize that the evolution of consciousness to the state where we're at now in the West only happened because of what God put into place. That's how this came about. That's why we all know genocide, war, and slavery are wrong, okay? God uh, God gives us what we need to grow into our capacity. That's what he's doing for us. And that's what Brandon doesn't recognize. Brandon wants God to deal with the world in a very flat way. Just snap his fingers and get rid of all of the evil. He doesn't deal in that way. And when you begin to dig deeper, it's not because he's deficient or doesn't exist. It's because he has a greater plan in mind that subsumes all of creation up into him. That's what this is. And he doesn't recognize that. Brandon can't recognize it. I hope that helped, Gilbert. Really good question. Really good question. What I'm trying to describe to you is how I view the world and why I think things are the way they are. But I'm not necessarily giving an apologetic defense here that somebody might find compelling. That's not my goal here. My goal is to help Christians understand why people like Brandon treat things the way they do. Okay. Gilbert, it was quite helpful. It was a great question, Gilbert. It was a great question. And I would recommend to anyone to read Owen Barfield because man's consciousness grows and evolves over time. And that's a key idea. It also helps you to understand the relationship of Old Testament to New Testament. Okay? Because man's consciousness is developing over time.